this program across Jamaica and the rest of the world we want to welcome you I know that people have been watching from the United States from Canada from the Caribbean persons have been watching from the United Kingdom and that's one of the things that technology affords us we can connect with each other at the presses of buttons and it doesn't cost you a plane ticket to get there come on somebody and so the devil no doubt meant the coronavirus for evil but God meant it for good because brother Batty, the thing is that if if Satan can thwart the plans of God it means that Satan is the world boss and therefore we must never forget that the things that God allows it's because they are all a part of his greater plan and that's why whenever we are committed to God anything we go through we must turn out on top sister Phyllis why because it devil just can't win the things that God has earmarked for his children the devil cannot stop them from coming the only only thing that might thwart the plans of God is if we fail to cooperate with the covenant of God there's nothing that God wants to give to you that Satan can stop you from getting when you are truly connected to him God is not gonna sit down with you and say sister Cheryl I really wanted to give you this blessing but that old dragon he has no power over God every time he's fought against God he has lost and when he thought that he was finally ridding himself of God in the death of Jesus Christ, he brought us salvation. Come on, somebody. God is a wonderful God. Let's magnify the name of the Lord one more time. Today, we are closing week two of this program. We thought we had all the time in the world left, but already we're at the end of week number two. We have another week to go, and we don't know how the Lord will lead after that, but we will follow as he leads us. I want to welcome those of us who are joining in. Some of the churches are also streaming the program in the physical sanctuary, which means that they are at church watching the program together at this time. So I want to welcome all of those churches who are streaming the program inside the sanctuary and so I want you to know that we are connected with more than your eyes can see. And we bless the name of Jesus Christ for that. We've started off with a very simple premise. That the reason why the world needs the hope experience is because the trans world pandemic of sin has plunged the world into hopelessness until Jesus intervened. This is the crux of all human suffering, Elder Ranger. It is the reason for all the problems we face. Mankind are not all into the God business. And so many agnostics fail to acknowledge that we are in a spiritual battle between good and evil. So because they do not acknowledge God, Sister English... They believe that every matter that they face may be solved with some man-made solution. But every time man thinks he's advancing, then he gets himself into more trouble. Every time a disease is sorted out, something else arises. Just yesterday I read that the first fully vaccinated crews had to come to a stall because two of the passengers were tested positive with COVID-19. They claim that it is a new strain, so I don't know if it's 19 or 20. But the whole matter is that, as the old song says, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And every time we think we are getting better, we recognize that this world cannot be the place to settle down. Hello, somebody. This world cannot be my final home. Rich men suffer from diseases like poor people do. Hello, somebody. Rich men die like poor people do. So status cannot keep us from the atrocities that the trans world pandemic has caused. Sin is the name of that pandemic. 
Social distancing can't protect you from it. Mask wearing can't keep you from it. Small gatherings can't secure you from it. Hand washing can't cleanse you from it. Staying at home cannot shield you from it. Only Jesus Christ can heal you from it. And that's why I preach Jesus Christ and him lifted up for the hope experience. Our hope quote from last night's message, Heaven's Maternity Ward is, Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. To be saved, you must be born again. In case somebody missed it, when you are born of your mother, uh, that is b being born in sin because we have all inherited the sinful nature from Adam and Eve, our, pre our first parents. And therefore, we will still die one day, Brother Harrison. And then in judgment, uh, when we are found wanting, we will suffer the consequences in hell until we die eternally. That's twice. But when we are born twice, firstly, of our parents, and that is being born in sin, shaping in iniquity. When we are born again, not at the Sendance Bay Hospitals, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology Maternity Ward, but in heaven's maternity ward, we are born of water and of the spirit. We may still die, but then resurrection morning will come. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when you are born once, you die how many times? twice but when you are born twice you only die what once somebody say praise the lord if you have only been born once you are in problem you need to enter into heaven's maternity water to be delivered and i'm very happy that right across the bamboo brownstown st Deca, and alexandria districts the maternity ward is on active duty, is on active duty today. <laughs> uh, uh, that amen is too weak, man. You never forget. That amen is not good enough. Come on. I said the maternity ward of heaven is on active duty today. As a matter of fact, the deliveries have started. Because even though we're going to have most of the babies delivered after the message today, when we transfer, when we transfer ourselves from here to the beach, uh, one lady who wanted to get baptized early in the morning because of her situation, uh, one of those midwives, although it's past the clock, that Jesus uses in his maternity ward, uh, went by the river to make sure that she gets the vaccine. Somebody say amen. Because that is where the true transformation will come from, Brother Lewar. We must surrender all to Jesus. And as our little, um, our little songster, little sister Batik sung this morning, Jesus wants it all today. Amen. Join us tomorrow evening for the subject, All Aboard. You don't need passport to come. All aboard. Even if your visa expired. All aboard tomorrow evening. And as we enter into this final week, as far as we see for now, I want you to be more deliberate in being sharers of hope by reaching out to your loved ones, your friends, your relatives, even your enemies if they will listen to you, and invite them to come and join the hope experience. I know that the days have been lengthened, and I know that the curfew has also been lengthened. So people have reasons to be out a little later based on the long day and based on a, a, a later curfew. But I, we have not adjusted the time because we still want to leave adequate time for those who come from the different parts of the, the districts involved to transition home without breaking curfew. So what you notice we have been doing in the evenings at 6.15, we still start, but we give you a little musical prelude, then a countdown to quote-unquote buy you a little time, and then we come on the stream. Amen, somebody? So I wanted to invite people to come. Let me see the hands of those here who have invited persons to come, especially non-members. Raise your hand. Where some hands are not going up, now you have an opportunity to invite somebody. You are a digital disciple. A true disciple is one who not only experiences the power of God, but one who also invites others to experience it. Are we together? So YouTube and Facebook and everybody, let us all take the opportunity to invite others to watch. I also want to make a very special appeal, even as I get ready to get into the word, for you to support 
the ministry that we are doing at this time. Some of you have already given your pledges, made special support, and we're inviting you to continue that. So we're asking all of you here today, if you have not yet done so, make a special pledge towards the program to help to offset the expenses. And no, I am not one of those who have come today to tell you to sow a seed. The seed has already been planted in Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. But that is how we support the work of God. We have purses in the field, and there are other expenses, uh, as you can imagine, uh, to stage a program like this. So those who are from the different churches, you can make your pledges at your local church where you are at, in the St. Deca district, in the Bamba district, in the, the, the Alexandria district, in the Brownstone district. Those who are watching online from overseas and elsewhere, you can reach out to us and indicate your desire to send your pledges. Whatever the Lord has laid upon your heart, you can email us at Brownstown at njcadventist.org or you can actually reach out to us on any of the other contact methods that we provide you with online make a special commitment to the lord today to assist in his cause i'm going to ask my tech team to provide a phone number and uh, the email address that they can reach out to us if they are desirous of making a special contribution to the program. Everybody who's here, please stretch out your right hand. If you don't have a right hand, stretch out the left one. Come. Stretch out your hand. As a matter of fact, Sister Millen, please come and join me. Amen. Stand right here. Make sure that the camera can see you. Can you see your camera, folks? Yeah. Okay. Please stretch out your right hand and clench your fist. Amen. I'm going to give you my phone. I don't know how people are going to call me after this. Take it. Keep your hand closed. Come on, Sister Minnie. You can do better than that. She's trying to really hold it. I think her, she thinks her hand is magnet and my phone is metal. <laughs> You see, you cannot grasp the greater blessings that God wants to place into your hands while grasping on to the menial possessions you have. Hello, somebody? Clench it again. You cannot get the greater blessings that God has in store for your life while grasping to your menial possessions. That's why Jesus said that it is more blessed to give than to what? Receive, because when you give an empty out in that nothing night, come on, somebody. So watch me now. Keep your hand out. Martin Luther, the priest, wrote these words. And it's one of my favorite quotes. Anybody who knows Pastor Johnson knows that he loves this quotation. I go to weddings, I use it. I come to programs like these, I use it. Listen, I have held many things in my hand and have lost them all. Open up now. But that which I placed in God's hand, I still possess. Amen, somebody. Sister Zora, and if you put that in an essay and break it down, you get A. You may go, Sister Millen. Thank you so much. Let's say it together, everybody. I have held many things in my hand and I've lost them all. Open up now. But that which I placed in God's hand, I still possess. Whatever you want to keep, give it to God. <laughs> Even your life. Because it says that he that keepeth his life shall what? Lose it. But he who loses it for my sake, not for foolishness, for my sake shall what? Find it. So the more we invest our lives into God is the more we get life. The more we invest our money into his cause is the more he blesses us. Those who believe it say amen. So reach out. Make a special pledge. And send it this coming week so that when we end the program, we can ensure that all of God's bills are paid. And I too am making my contribution because everybody who gets a blessing must be a blessing. What do you say? So tomorrow night, all aboard this evening, to date or not to date, at 6 o'clock on our Zoom platform. Only if we overflow Zoom will we stream to YouTube in, on that case. And we'll be looking at matters of dating and relationships, misfit versus unfit, and the whole nine yards. Brother RJ, looking at me like you're planning to be there. Yes, you can be there. But for today, we look at the subject, hello from the other side. Hello from the other side. Bow your heads with me. Everlasting Father and our God, 
What a privilege for us to have access to your words. Such powerful words. The governments of men keep the things about their lives and constitution as confidential information protected by laws. Oftentimes they are leaked and men are imprisoned and even put to death for them. But you, Lord, have revealed yourself to us through your words because you want us to know all about you. And as we delve into them today, we are mindful that spiritual things are still spiritually discerned. In the name of Jesus, therefore, as you inspire my thoughts and speak through me, inspire our hearts to receive with clarity the word today. And Lord, may we not only accept them, but be convicted by them that they may lead us to Jesus Christ, whom to know is life eternal. Amen. Our key text, you know it by now, Mark 11 verse, I mean Luke 11 verse 28. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and do what? Obey it. Hello from the other side. If you look at your screen now, you see a boat. It's an amphibious boat, meaning that it also has wheels. That means it can drive on land, and it can sail on water, and some of them can also operate on the water. The boat you are looking at is called the Stretch Dock 7. And in 2018, 29 passengers... And two crew members were aboard the Stretch Dock 7 on July 19 when it sank in the Table Rock Lake near the tourist town of Branson, Missouri. As thunderstorms rolled into the sea, the boat landed upright on its wheels. Prosecutors slapped Captain Kenneth Scott McKee with several indictments for failing to check the winds before or after the boat went into the water and for failing to ensure that safety and emergency information was shared with the, with the passengers such as the need to wear their flotation devices, life jackets. In fact, it is reported that he told them that they exist above them but they would not need them. 17 persons died, including 9 persons from one family. The thing is that, brothers and sisters, that thunderstorm took them by surprise. And as a result of that, it cost 17 lives. But even though on the right to the kingdom of God, things may get rocky, God is still calling you to come on the other side. For life is like a big ship sailing from earth to glory. It will pass by your way and it will stop by your bay. But it will not forever stay because it must reach its destination one day. But there are many other ships in life. But God's ship is the safest. God's ship leads to life. Other ships leads to the tomb. Lead to the tomb. God's ship leads to glory. Other ships lead to doom. God's ship leads to happiness. Other ships lead to gloom. So get on board God's ship because it will be departing soon. Jesus was out teaching with his disciples. He was healing people and casting out demons. And at the end of the day, when the people were pressing him, the Bible says that he went into a boat. And Jesus had a way of intermingling uh, the things that we used to pass time and vacate in his ministry. He went hiking when he preached on the Mount of Olives. Hello, somebody. He went on a cruise uh, when he went onto that boat. What a life. Uh, what a day when I get to preach on a boat. And so at the end of the day, while Jesus went into the boat, uh, he did something that the disciples never anticipated. He said to them uh, that we let us go over 
on the other side somebody say the other side mark 4 35 we find it throughout the gospels but the reason why i like mark's account of it is because he includes brother williams an aspect of the story that the others left out and because in the time of the bible men never had speed typists and all the scribes had to use those pen pens dipping those feathers into ink and write whatever they wrote was important because they never have words for years the Bible says, on the same day, when evening had come, having been out teaching all day and healing and casting out demons, he said to them, Jesus was the one who wanted to go on a trip. Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, for the people were still pressing them, they took him along in the boat, Brother, Brother Lambert did. Uh, they, they took him along in the boat as he was and other little boats were also with him that's the part that mark includes uh, that the others marked out and other little boats were also with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he jesus was in the stern i learned it in that um, first aid in english blue cover book that we used to use back in the days if you don't know that book call me sir and that book taught us that a stern is the back of a ship or a boat come on somebody and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he jesus was what asleep in the stern the bible says that he was asleep on a pillow so i can imagine <laughs> elder guy and they awoke him they the disciples and said to him teacher or master do you not care that we are perishing then jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea what did he say peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and everybody frightened but he said to them why are you so fearful huh how is it that you have no what faith and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be one version says what kind of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him that is what i love about my god some people can't talk to people but my god talks to things because he's the true word boss somebody say amen there are three points I want to share from this passage. Sister Sash, Jesus wants to take you to the other side. Not only that, choose your boat carefully. And finally, you will never perish with Christ as your captain. Can we go through them again? Jesus wants to take you on the what? To, to the other side. Choose your boat carefully and you will never perish with Christ as your captain. Jesus wants to take you to the other side. But where is the other side, Elder Millen? The only information we find is that he told them, let us go over to the other side. Well, the other side, if you look on your screen, which is a modern day photograph of where Jesus was located when he told them to go on the other side. It's called the Sea of Galilee. It is referred to throughout scriptures, both in the Old and New Testament, by many terms, such as the Lake of Gennesaret in Luke 5 verse 1, or the Lake Tiberias. Sometimes it is called the Sea of Tiberias, like John 6 verse 1, or the Lake or Sea of Kenneret, found in Numbers 14, 11, and Joshua 12 verse 3, or sometimes it was so popular, everybody just call it the Sea or the Lake, like Matthew to 8 and verse 24. This lake is Israel's largest freshwater lake. As a matter of fact, it is the lowest freshwater lake on earth and the second lowest lake in the world. Nowhere as big as the little ones we have in Jamaica. In the middle of the road. Patos. It was so big a lake that it was referred to as a what? Sea by many. And at levels between 215 meters and 209 meters below sea level, it is approximately 53 kilometers in circumference and about 21 kilometers long and 13 wide. 
its area is 166.7 kilometers square at its fullest and its maximum depth is approximately 141 going to 200 feet the lake is fed partly by underground springs uh, but its main source is the jordan river which flows through it from north uh, to south and exits uh, at the, the place known as the degania dam this was a popular place in time christ time and by the time of christ uh, the people were populating uh, the shores of the lake uh, creating new villages and settlements uh, as a matter of fact uh, uh, there were some peculiarities about this lake because based on where it was located uh, it was often uh, a, a spot uh, for freak storms uh, because of the mountains that surrounded it as a matter of fact it was by the shores of this very lake called the Sea of Galilee that Jesus recruited four of his first disciples Peter and his brother Andrew who were fishermen on the lake as well as James and his brother John aka the sons of what Zebedee or sons of thunder set in the hills of northern Israel the Sea of Galilee being nearly 700 feet below sea level and nearly eight miles wide at its widest point and more than 12 miles long from the north to south plunges to depths of 200 feet that's very deep now the sea's location makes it um, subject to sudden and violent storms uh, as the wind comes over the eastern mountains and drops suddenly onto the sea. Storms are especially likely when an east wind blows cool air over the warm air that covers the sea because in the valley it's going to be warmer. So when the cool air from the mountain comes down and mixes with the hot air in the valley, then it causes storms uh, to arise suddenly and many tsunamis and the sudden change can provide uh, produce uh, surprisingly furious storms uh, in a short time uh, like what we found in this particular passage uh, my brothers and sisters uh, Peter and James uh, I mean Peter and Andrew and James uh, and John uh, being experienced professional fisher folk uh, would have known about this reality so no sensible person typically traveled on the lake at a certain time of the evening because the cool air would be descending down into the valley with the warm air and as I explained it could cause a storm but irrespective of knowing this fact as the chief archaeologist I mean the chief meteorologist Jesus said let us go on the other side you need to understand uh, therefore that Jesus Christ uh, sometimes deliberately takes the church through a storm because whereas the storm took the disciples by surprise uh, it never took Jesus by surprise uh, he knew that it was going to happen yet he went and closed his eyes <laughs> and in the middle of the, the, the cruise uh, the Bible said uh, that the windstorm arose uh, and Jesus was fast asleep in the stern uh, on the back without the least of concerns uh, and the disciples said to him master do you not care that we are perishing him, but wait a second sister Edwards uh, one needs to understand uh, that the Bible was only seeking to give a synopsis of the situation uh, because given that Jesus uh, was no reputed fisherman uh, in fact one day when he went on that same Sea of Galilee and saw some men Peter and the others he said to them men have you caught any fish he said no we have toiled all night and we've caught nothing and he said to them Lord into the deep uh, and prepare for a cash uh, and Peter said to him Lord Mrs. say you don't want nothing about fishing uh, when you don't catch a night you can't catch a deer but because Jesus kept pressing him brother Alge he decided to do it so the Bible says Peter said nevertheless at your word so sister Stearson uh, he went into the, 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 the boat and he launched out uh, and Jesus told them to cast the net on the right side <laughs> if you are going to get the harvest uh, that God has in store for you you've got to cast the net on the right side hello somebody if you are going to get the blessing uh, that God has in store for you you've got to take your stand on the right side 
so while they did that the bible said brother harris uh, that they caught a large catch and it was so big uh, that the net was breaking and they had to call other fishermen with their boats uh, to assist them uh, let me tell you something when you act upon the word of god uh, jesus says sister english the words that i speak uh, they are what they are life uh, and they are power so it's not wind uh, when god talks things happen <laughs> hello by the words of his mouth the heavens were created when god talks things come into being that is why god has to choose his words carefully when he went to lazarus tomb i can imagine jesus in his humanity was about to say dead and then somebody said no jesus if i said that all of the children be the magories so he was very what specific he called him by name lazarus come on church of god come forth because it was, it was ready for Abraham. <laughs> Hello, somebody. He was ready for Joshua. Am I talking to somebody? He was ready for Samuel. He was ready for any of the dead. So he said to the Lazarus, specificity. So watch me now. Watch me now. I said when Jesus told them to launch out and get a catch in another story, in another narration, they said, Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about, but you're an official man, so we understand. When a catch a night, you can't catch a day. Growing up in Portland, the men would go to strike on the Rio Grande in the night because the fish would come in to feed and to shawl or enjoy themselves. You won't find them so easily in the daytime, so it will take more from you and so when they caught the big net the, the thing was breaking elder guy you know what i never sprat them catching there i remember once i was on the coast years ago when i came to do the first series in north jamaica conference while in ncu it was 2012 and dr white invited me down to civil rights to do a program then he invited me to come back 2013 to do another program in saint Anne's bay and windsor road and i remember one day i was on the coast and i saw a large string of fish and when i asked him on the price the price so nice because i saw a lot of fish and i said cool fish with that the price is me buy this string but catch the thing a pure fryer so you i'm so so born but based on what the bible said happened when they cast the net upon the word or command of jesus and a friars did they in there come on somebody and some big red snapper did they in there come on somebody and a banga the in there look like some salmon the in there and hello i saw peter and the others knew that jesus was no fisherman so i do not believe that they attempted this is the point i'm getting at brother williams to wake up jesus at the beginning uh, you never got what the preacher said <laughs> now because the story just gives you the summary of its sister sasha people believe that they were just there on the boat and say oh today they're rough but if he's so nice and cool to be on the lake and two two boom thunder and lightning and then just run and say jesus no the disciples being many of them being fishermen were trying to handle the situation themselves <laughs> so they, yeah somebody i imagine that peter being such a motor mercy at the time was already coordinating an effort and said james come on, get me two more buckets you bail on that side you lower the sail lower the sail we need to change the direction of this boat come on guys you're not following me rock it a little bit and you, and you listen to me now man but when they tried everything and recognized that in their professional capacity because they were hoping uh, to stabilize the ship uh, and then when jesus would have rose from his sleep uh, they would not look upon him and say queen to you nearly dead young but no a hurricane uh, they were hoping to save the day and then to tell jesus how they nearly dead out of sea and he would have drown like the people them upon the titanic uh, but when they tried to fix it uh, and recognize they could have fixed it um, by themselves uh, they remembered for the first time uh, that the master was in the back of the boat uh, so they went out and they said master do you not care that we are perishing uh, sometimes why our boat sink is because we try Try to stabilize the storms by ourselves mm -hmm. it's not because they love jesus so much and say you know what the preacher tired so about the pastor jesus no 
it's because they never believed in his ability to assist so by this time when they were trying to fix it and let the man sleep they said right now if we are got dead he need to try and save the ship too maybe they were calling the master to say jesus come hold on power under the pool them now grab a bucket and help to throw off water and jesus was so relaxed in the sleep uh, when he came out uh, and they were there fussing and cussing oh you must be in the back of the ship you know, hear the thunder rolling and the winds blowing uh, 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 then you come for that out here you, you do you not care that we are dying but jesus came out and what did he say church what did he say church that too loud let me talk to you facebook and youtube and everybody listening if jesus is like jeremy and johnson when we wake up my voice not so loud it's sexy good morning hello somebody do i have any other testimony in the house when you just wake up in the morning your voice not loud not true that because your voice still relaxed from sleeping or some people shake their head they look like they're loud from their wake <laughs> no wonder some neighbors are loud hello somebody you know you know but when i wake up and somebody calls me and wakes me up and i answer i'm not gonna like, good morning i'm gonna like, good morning with a little bass good morning and because the chip doesn't fall far from the block sister cheryl i must have gotten it from the maker <laughs> hello somebody so i want you to understand the point i'm making sister sasha and i showed jesus shout after the wind make it stop and i bark jesus back off of the wind make it stop it was not the power of his voice but the power of his person ah somebody never get what i just said i said it was not the power of his voice but the power of his person i imagine he just came out and said what's the big deal you know sister we are dead peace be still hush your force as a matter of fact the command was not just to the, the waters it was also to the noisy disciples you need to understand that sometimes the solution to your problem elder duncan is right in your presence in the person of jesus but you're so loud you can't hear <laughs> ah, i feel like preaching sometimes you're stretched out you're stressed out and you are so depressed out and you are so anxious and worried and fussy fussy and cussy cussy you don't realize that the master is by your side one bag of nice on the boat La 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 so in other words, Jesus said, peace. I said, shut up. Tappy nice. Chill. Hush your force. Stop making noise at my ears. Hello, somebody. Sometimes while you're going through your storms, you feel like the boat is about to capsize. But you need to understand that it was Jesus who called you to come over on the other side. You see, the intention of God was for them to go and sleep. Can I talk to you? If Jesus was tired, them they tired too. Hello, somebody. But sometimes we are so lacking in faith that we believe that we must see everything that is going on. But if they had gone to bed like Jesus, they would not have even seen that they have been to a storm. Oh, when you're going through your struggles don't lose your sleep while up and counting sheep because he that keepeth israel neither slumbers nor sleep god was the one who invited them into the storm sister sasha i preached it last week in matter 16 jesus told peter that simon simon satan desires to have you that he might sift you like what wheat Hello, can I sift? When I was growing up, and I would used to see my mother sifting until we learn how to sift. So you sift when you make house. Not true that. Uh, you, when, you, when you make house, you sift because you want to make sure that you can get rid of the what? They want to make sure that you can get you can get rid of the what? 
your mother stone them you want to sand for nice and crisp you know what when you're doing the nice what not the rough casting you know the rendering you see the wall i pluck out pluck out are we together but sometimes when you want to make good jamaican dumpling ain't that something we're not talking about already make dumpling in a supermarket hello that now keep when you're ready, you make sure so boy, you sift the flour to make sure that it is nice and smooth and you get rid of it. But guess what? Satan sifting is different than Jesus sifting. Because you see, what you sift, whatever remains in the sieve, you throw that away. But Satan wanted to shake Peter to show Jesus and not knowing of Peter. So everything I got left in the sieve. Hello, somebody. So he said to Jesus, you are acting as if Peter is anybody. But if you give me a shake off of Peter, when I don't sift him like wheat you have to recognize you are trash but notice this now sister jackson i said it was jesus who invited them into the storm so don't take every storm you get into your life and say the devil do it no sometimes jesus brings us through the storm to learn to teach us how to trust him mm -hmm. did you hear what i said sister Judean? Sometimes Jesus takes us through the storm to teach us how to trust him and to cultivate complete patience and dependence upon God. So watch me now. Jesus said to Peter, uh, uh, Jesus said to Peter, Satan desires to have you, Simon, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. And when you have returned, Matthew 16, strengthen the brethren. Brother Alge, return from where? From the sifting. In other words, I have acquiesced. A big word for agree. I agreed to give you to Satan to sift you. But I have prayed for you also that your faith will not fail when you are being sifted. And when you have returned from the sifting, strengthen your brethren. <laughs> Let me tell you, church of God, you may be going through a sifting, but don't you lose your cool. It, if Jesus has to give Satan permission to touch you, you think I'm lying? Ask Job. When God told up Satan about Job, Satan said, if you ever give me a sift after that. And you know Job's story. There's nothing that Satan can do in your life to mash up your life like Nico without God's permission. And whenever God sends you to sift, to get your sifting by the devil, you know what he, you know what he does? He prays for you that your faith does not fail. And then he says to you, when you have come from the storm, when you have come from the fire, when you have returned from the sifting, strengthen the bridging. Your test is to give you a testimony. Your frown is to give you a crown. Your storm is to you to teach people that God is able. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus wants to take you on the other side. But he's going to take you there through storms, trials, tribulations, money problem, health problem, man problem, woman problem, heart sort of problem. But once God is the captain, you will make it. Do you know why you're going to make it? Because whenever Jesus steps into your storm, you will step into your calm and experience peace beyond the norm. <laughs> you never heard that. Whenever Jesus steps into your storm, you will step into your calm and experience peace beyond the norm. Peace. Be still. Chill. Chill. In John 14, 1 to 3, what did he say? Let not your heart be what? Trouble. He that be, he believe in God, believe also in what? Me. In my father's house, what? Are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a what? Place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am what? Coming again to receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I said, Jesus wants to take you to the other side. Number two, choose your boat carefully. Has anybody ever gone on a boat ride? Let me see the hands of all those who can swim. You cannot cross it. Choose your boat carefully. Listen to this text. Let's get back to the text. Verse 36. Please bring me a little water. Now when they had left the multitude, 
They took him along in the boat as he was. Keep the text on the screen. Let it sink in. And I want everybody to notice what is in red. Some of you can't see, so I'll be reading it in a moment. When they're preaching about water, you need water. <clears throat> Let's read the text together. Mark 4, 36. <clears throat> now, when they had left the multitude, they took him, Jesus, <clears throat> along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. What was the origin? And other little boats were also with him. Elder Millen, at the start of the story, which is not a fictitious one. The Bible tells us that other little boats were there. But at the end of the freak storm, we don't hear nothing about them. Hello, somebody? You, you, you don't get that. I imagine that the fisherman's boat was not the best looking one, brother Batty. I imagine that they saw some little small time yachts. Or some big time ones like I often see on the Port Antonio Marina. Chilling out. I thought that even if one would presume to go out on these dangerous waters at this time of the day. It would be better if we had one of those more modern vessels. I can imagine as they looked around them. They saw sturdier boats that seemed that they were more capable of withstanding any potential windstorm or thunderstorm that could arise on the, the, the Sea of Galilee, the Lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Tiberias. But at the end of the story, the only boat that was mentioned was the boat that Jesus was on. Ah, you're not hearing me, somebody. Let me tell you something. As Jesus gets ready, young people and folks of all ages, to take you to the other side, Satan has some alternative boat rides. Hello, somebody. He's telling you that a child come in the church now because the storm will rock the boat. So he's telling you that the party is shut when you're out in the world. He tells you that you are so nice when you're in the world. He's telling you that the boat of Christ, that of Christ uh, is too boring. Uh, when you get on that boat, uh, you can't sing dirty wine. Much less to do the dirty wine. Hello, somebody. When you get on that boat, you can't drink rum and Red Bull. When you get on that boat, you can't smoke weed make you high. Hello, somebody. Higher than your castle and brownstone high. When you get on that boat, you cannot enjoy the pleasures of the world. Don't go on that boat as yet. But let me tell you something. At the end of the story, even though the boat of Jesus went through the stormy seas, it was the only one that got there safely. You need to understand that as Jesus is getting ready to take you to to heaven satan is going to give you another boat you better choose your boats carefully he comes with the boats of entertainment the boats of scamming the boats of fornication the boats of adultery the boats of rum drinking the boats of all the pleasures of the world but let me tell you something the bible says be alert and of a sober mind because your adversary the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour the other boats may look good but they will capsize like the one in Negril the other day Proverbs 14 12 says there's a way that appears to be right to a man but in the end it leads to what death the only boat that got to the other side safely was the one that Christ was on come on somebody Church people, I know sometimes it's rough, but turn in the boat. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Lord of mercy, I'm not talking about food. Because when you talk about boat in Jamaica, some people get ang I mean, hungry, sister. Yani, they get hungry. Because when Jamaicans say they're going to run a boat, sister Zanya, it means they're going to cook food. And most of the time, it's not rice. It's cat wheel dumpling or something. Hello, somebody. But that's not the boat I'm talking about today. Don't get hungry on me right now. I'm preaching choose your boat carefully sometimes sister marston the boat will rock but turning at the boat sometimes they will criticize you but turning at the boat because what made the difference with the boat that the disciples were on was not peter was not james and john and andrew nor any of the other apostles 
What made the difference was the presence of Jesus. Ah, somebody say the name of Jesus. Uh, what made the difference was the presence of Jesus. So if they criticize you, come on, you're not preaching. You must say, turn in at the boat. For those who do not understand the, the Jamaican parlance, it means stay on the boat. Uh, hello, somebody. They may criticize you, but what must you do, everybody? Turn in at the sister ranger. Tell them off say, because they don't know if it's be patwa. They may criticize you, but what must you do, everybody? Turn in at the boat. You will go through temptations, but what must you do? Turn in at the boat. You may go through trials and tribulations, but what must you do? Turn in at the boat. People may look down on you, but remember, the only way persons can look down on you is because they don't value themselves. Hello, somebody? And the only way people can pull you down is because they are already beneath you. Turn in at the boat. I never see nobody there above or pull down nobody yet. When you are above, what do you do? Come on, somebody. What do you do when you are above? Anybody who is above pulls up people. So anybody that pulls you down, don't go down there. Don't go down there. Stay where you are, Sister Bramwell. Hello, somebody. And if anything, pull them up. Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. What must you do? Pull them up. That is what Jesus calls us to do. We must strengthen one another in the boat. Hello, somebody. We must rock together in the boat. Hello, somebody. We must live in unity on the boat. We must love our neighbors on the boat. We must speak well of each other on the boat. Hello, we must be kindly affection to one another on the boat. Hello, and when others hungry, you have no food, you must share your food on the boat. And when you're full of clothes and you see a church brother on the boat, and every day when you come out on the boat, and the one suit you have in the boat, then give one of your suit on the boat. And when you share your clothes with your brother or sister on the boat, shut your mouth on the boat. Hello, somebody. Turn in at the boat. Turn in at the boat. Because the only boat that made it to safety was the one that Christ was on. So number one, I'm getting there. Jesus wants to take you to the other side number two choose your boat carefully and number three finally you will never perish with christ as your captain what did i say you will never perish with christ as your captain the bible tells us in verse 37 and 8 38 a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he, Jesus, was in the stern, back of the ship, of the boat, asleep on a pillow, Sister Shanique. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? When Jamaicans want to get feisty, they, they say to you, say, Excuse you? You ever hear that one before? It's a nice way to tell you, if you take away yourself, you know. Excuse you. I imagine Jesus looked at them and said, Excuse you? What did you just ask me? Do you not care that we are perishing? It is because Jesus cares that we are perishing while he, come in the, why he came in the first place. It is because he cares what we go through why he came in the first place. Pastor, what are you talking about? What did they ask him? Do you not care that we are what? perishing perish being the word look at john 3 16 come on church of god you know it let's read it from the brain for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what perish but have everlasting life how can you ask if jesus cares if you are perishing it is the reason why he came that's why the song says rescue the perishing and care for the dying snatch them from pity from sin and the grave in john 10 27 28 do you not care that we are perishing he says my sheep run hear my voice and i know them how do you know them jesus and they follow me what do they get jesus and i give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand i am not saying that when you have jesus the boat won't rock but rest assured it will stay intact <laughs> i say i am not saying that when you have jesus on your boat your boat won't rock but rest assured at the end of the day brother omarian it will stay intact somebody say intact somebody say intact so if the boat is rocking i'm gonna rock with jesus 
If the boat is stable, I'm going to stabilize with Jesus. If the boat is sinking, I'm going to sink with Jesus. If the boat is sailing, I'm going to sail with Jesus. Do you want to know why? Because it is better to have Christ dead asleep in the midst of your storm than to have Satan wide awake in the midst of your calm. That sounds like the hope quote. I said it is better to have Christ dead asleep or fast asleep in the midst of your storm than to have the devil wide awake in the midst of your calm hello somebody uh, let me break it down for you because when christ is even sleeping if you believe he is uh, in the midst of your storm uh, when he arose when he arises from the, the, the sleep he's gonna speak peace into your life he's gonna pe speak peace to your life but when you are in your calm without jesus it's going to look nice for a while. Hello, somebody. It's going to look sweet for a while. But you know what them say in Jamaica? What's sweet, nanny goat? We are going to cancel the Jamaican citizenship. Nanny goat is a woman goat, so our belly. What's sweet, nanny goat? Run our belly. You know what they say? Fire the moose moose tail. <sighs> in think a cool breeze. Yes, you see, my sister, the old people then can't relate to me. Let me relate to them. Yes. Chicken the merry, heart the near. Amen. This is why all of these are teaching something important. Sometimes you may be calm without Jesus, but a storm will come. Hello, somebody? It is better to have Jesus fast asleep in the midst of your storm than to have the devil wide awake in the midst of your calm. Because if Satan is calm in your life and everything looks nice and sugar and dandy, in due season, he will display the true reason. And that one will be to destroy your soul. There are three types of people who are watching today, brother and sister Walker. How many? Three types of people. Those who are heading into a storm. Those who are in the midst of a storm. And those who are just coming out of a storm. I don't know which category you fall in. But what I can tell you. That since it is not if storms will come. But when storms will come. Ensure that you are on the boat with Jesus. Hello somebody. Because once you're on the boat with Jesus. As a song for meditation told us. You will be able to ride out. Your storm. Ride out your storm you may be going through sickness today on the boat uh, but ride out your storm you may be going through cancer but ride out your storm the arthritis might be giving you problems in the legs uh, ride out uh, your storm the diabetes keeps giving you problem in your life uh, but ride out uh, your storm you're having a marital problem ride out uh, your storm you are having a financial crisis uh, ride out uh, your storm you're not getting along with your children ride out uh, your storm you have some troubles with your neighbor ride out uh, your storm the devil is on your back right out your storm the reason why the devil loves to be on your back is because you are ahead of him because if he was in front of you you would not be on your back but on your forehead come on somebody press along saints and ride out your storm the boat will rock but because christ is the captain it will remain intact it will get to the other side it will get to the other side oh as my singer gets ready psalm 125 tells me that once jesus is my captain nothing can stop me from getting over there because those who trust in the lord are like mount zion which cannot be moved but but abides forever for as the mountains surround jerusalem so the lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever somebody say amen in case you never got it there isaiah 43 it tells us when you pass 
through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned nor shall the hair on your body become I say Isaiah do you have anything else for encouragement he says yes pastor Isaiah 41 verse 10 fear thou not why are you so fearful you have little faith I am with thee be not dismayed I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my hand of righteousness ride out your storm hmm. I said Jesus wants to take you to the other side and as he does so choose your boat carefully and go on the boat with Jesus because with Christ and your captain you will never perish you will never perish turn it over today to Captain Jesus the decision card is coming in the chats in a moment this boat you choose to ride on will determine your final destiny one boat will lead to eternal life and one will lead to eternal damnation hello somebody i'm not here to mince words it's that vacation we're talking about salvation hello the boat you choose will determine your final destiny and the only way you can be in the boat that leads to glory is to make jesus your captain oh joshua calls him the captain of the lord's souls mm -hmm. Acts 2, 37 to 39. When Peter preached about the captain, the people said, men and brethren, what shall we do? In other words, elder guy, how can we get into that boat? I want to be in the boat with Jesus. If you want to be there, just wave your hand. I want to be in the boat with Jesus. If you want to be in the boat with Jesus, type in the chats, boat, boat, boat. Uh, listen to what G Peter said to them. Uh, when I read about some of the trips, uh, like Ledger for Pleasure, to take different Caribbean cruises, uh, they tell you that they depart from Montego Bay at certain seas that's when COVID is not keeping and that you have to pay a certain amount of money some trips will take you up to 1500 2000 US dollars depending on the view whether you want to be inside the ship or you want a nicer ocean view so that you can be chilling out on the deck to take a selfie and show the ocean behind you and they say I wish part of there I'm on vacation it costs a lot of money they tell you that you have to pay $35 US um, departure tax and you just need a passport you may not necessarily need a visa but I'm happy to tell somebody today that if you want to get on the boat that goes to heaven Jesus has already paid it all and the only departure tax you need is to turn it over to him so listen to what Peter said to them in Acts 2 repent and be baptized huh? how do you get on the boat shout it church repent and be baptized you're not talking this to somebody can hear through the mic shout it now repent and be baptized that cannot convict anybody what did Jesus say what did Peter say Baptized. repent and be baptized who every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the promise is for you those he was speaking to and your children the generation that would come through their posterity and for whom the, and for all who are afar off bamboo brownstown st. Deca Alexandria Jamaica the Caribbean the rest of the world you may be in the far off but it was promised to you you may not be at Pentecost at Pentecost but it's promised to you we are in the far off what are you gonna get when you get on this boat mark 16 verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved sometimes when you apply for certain things then tell you say um conditions apply we are uh, we have a limited number of spaces available but we'll try our very best to accommodate as many of you as possible some come to church and go to see the sign and the gates and we reach the capacity hello somebody but the bible tells us that whosoever desires to come on this boat with jesus there is a place for you so murderers there's a place for you repent that is to give up the murder and come hello somebody Amen. cinnamon there's a place for you but he's not calling you to stay in your sin as Charles Persian puts it, you and your sin must separate before you and your God can come together. You and your sin must separate before you and your God can come together.
to get into the boat whatever sin you've committed god says repent and what does it mean it is a sorrow for your sin and a turning away from it the problem is that some sorry but they're still a tarry hello some sorry but them still a tarry but true repentance is being sorry for your sins and turning away from them you can turn away from sin backslider you can turn away from sin sinner man you can have victory in jesus christ today that is why we call it the hope experience victory in jesus online evangelistic series but how do you get on the boat and get this victory he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved but he that believe it not will be what shall be condemned if you have already entered into the boat with jesus you may not be perfect but turn to him each day confess your sins where they are where they exist and stay on the boat you will be saved Turn in there if you used to be on the boat the link is in the chat click on it but some of your drum ship literally brother batik drum ship shark with me amyo the devil will attack you and tie you down in there i'm going to preach a message next week about those who love to drum ship but might i give a little trailer for that episode quickly i'm closing jesus talked about a man elder ranger out of whom he exorcised a pretty word cast out a demon and one day the demon came and she said, What's the word going on And he goes, so. The Bible said that it was well swept and clean and put together. At face value, it sounded as if the man's life was clean. But that's not what it meant. It means that the man was not filled with the presence of God. So apparently he gave up on his conviction and his commitment to godliness. So him empty, swept and clean. Not talking about cleanliness here, but no Holy Spirit not living in him again. Because some spirit there now, you know, is idea of the Holy Spirit and one next one. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus kick out one unclean spirit out of a man, where do you think he put in there? Blood and water, the Holy Ghost. So when the unclean spirit look and say, in the clean, no Holy Ghost, not there again, brother Lewars. The Bible says that he went and he found what? Seven other demons, what? Stronger than himself, stick up in, but they make it joke you too hot. If you couldn't kick him out the first time, he means saying can't get kicked out again so he said me now go back there me i go for some of my cronies them so he went for what seven demons stronger than himself and they came and entered into the man and the last state of the man the bible says was what worse than the first what am i saying you see whenever you are in the lord and you backslide and see it i recognize you they get one at the time in the past he said more he said more demons for what you down Oh, I oh, me say the amen for everybody. Not for no, me say amen for it. Ah, amen, yes. Amen, sister. Me. Amen. You never hear what the preacher does say. I'm going to deal with it, you know. No, I'm not preaching the message. It's called trailer. Coming next week. If Satan comes back into a life that was made righteous by God, that had the Holy Spirit, I recognize that you're going back in a sin. You give up the Holy Ghost. And I want to be my sin come demons that is a seven hello somebody and somebody ever say pastor that's not possible because it means that the rest of the world will walk free no keep your mouth according to the bible in john 5 when jesus went to the tomb at gennesaret of the gatherings there was a madman there and when he said to the demon say what is your name here the fiestiness legion because we are many well cock up in the man life with seti living in a heart and a mashup in life and you know what a legion is it is a roman expression for a company of soldiers anywhere between four to six thousand but me nice me have a stick with the four thousand if satan can find four thousand demons to put in a one man demon enough you wonder why the man burn up the woman in the bar down so and not because he get a burn up to him after he run go to the hospital and then catch him demon hello somebody you know why they went into the church and shot the woman while she was worshiping? Demon. Hello, somebody? You know why people love kill people over them possession? Demon. The first somebody were bad mind people's property as Satan where they want to take over heaven. 
I know somebody? You know why sometimes the key how you try to get along with some folks, they are just causing antagonism. Demons! Because the Bible says God's spirit is not a spirit of confusion. And it's not a spirit that causes dissension. It brings about what? Joy and peace and love and unity. Are we together? Mm -hmm. If Satan can find 4,000 devils for putting on one man, Sister Eddie, the means Eddie devil, then no! That's why the Bible says we must stay under the coverage. Hello, somebody. Yeah. He that dwelleth in the what? Secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. No, you know what the text says. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Some of us think they did not talk about the physical warriors them back in the days only. No, it's talking about the principalities and the powers. And how many at your right hand? Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come nigh you. That's why you can't see them. Because Jesus just back them off <laughs> hey, back them off that is the trailer that is coming next week i'm going to develop on that he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved but he that believe it not shall be condemned so backslider the demons might be set loose on you but jesus cast seven demons out of mary magdalene <laughs> ah, you, you, you notice the consistency of scripture Say, so look, like Mary Magdalene did that one backslider. Hello, somebody? One came out and she went back into sin. So seven go, but when the real boss show up, he just hey, come out. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how many demons have taken you over. You have the power to walk away today. God wants to cut and clear and tear down the strongholds and the principalities. And the powers in your life. I'll tell you what those mean next week. And to give you victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know that you want to come on the ship. But every time you see you go back in the ship. See it and I whisper things in your ear. Come on board. Sinner man. You don't have all the time in the world to come on this ship. Time is running out. He that believes and is baptized. Will be saved. He that believeth not will be condemned get on board stay on board because god wants to save you today my last text acts 22 verse 16 as sister sasha sings the appeal and the decision card is in the chat and now why are you waiting arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the lord why she sings if you are here today and you want to be baptized so that you can come on the boat that goes to heaven. I invite you to stand and walk up close to the front. Don't bundle, but I invite you to stand and come close to the front. You are here today and you say, Pastor, I want to be baptized today to come on the boat with Jesus Christ. Stand where you are and walk come close to the front. And if you are online, fill in the decision card and we will contact you and make it happen. Come, come to the front. Look out for them. We'll stand wherever you are and walk to the front. Today is the day you want to baptize. You want to say, Lord, I want to come on the ship. I see a man coming. Step up, step up. Yes, man. Walk up to the front. Give them a big amen, somebody. I want you to know that some are going to come from Bamboo. I want you to know that some are going to come from Alexandria. I I want you to know that some are going to come from St. Deca and some are going to come from Brownstone. Amen. Stand right there. Stand right there. You are here today and you want to say, Lord, I want to be baptized. I want to be on the ship. I want to be on the boat that goes to glory. Stand and come to the front. And if you're online, amen, I see you, my sister. Amen, I see you, my brother. If you never brought clothes, don't worry about things like those. We have enough to share with you today. We can make arrangement for it go over there and talk to the elder I want elder Duncan to stand by to do them the baptismal vows I want my elders to come and look after them sister Tapper come on and assess each person and get ready it's a victory day here in Jesus Christ we are tired of the boats that look like they are going anywhere but at the end of the day they sink in the ocean of despair tired of the ships that promises promise to take you to places but instead of places it's only disgraces come into the boat with Jesus you are not yet baptized young people there are some children that some people are locking down if Jesus can help them we you give them to Satan for Satan no love a pitney them give the Lord a chance if they are big enough to do pep they are big enough to walk with Jesus hello come into the boat amen I see you my sister come into the boat come into the boat 
come into the boat. Sing that song, Sister Sasha. Like a ship. Yes. Sailing out on a tree so rough and long. Sing that song. So far from shore. So far from home. I set out in search of a reason to go on. And there I found it in the eye of the storm. No matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Come into the boat. Sing that song, Sister Sasha. Somebody online is struggling. It's time for you to overcome by the power of God and come into the boat. Sing that song. When the wind and water rages and the billows begins to roll. The blessed rock of ages speaks peace. The blessed rock of ages speaks peace to my soul. Holds me in his arms So safe So safe and so warm. so warm And what happens? And there I find shelter In the eye of the storm Church of God, if you know that song, sing it with me as somebody decides for Jesus today. Come on, everybody. No matter what storm clouds may rock as somebody signs up to come in the boat at this moment. The light of my Savior. Lead me safely. Lead me safely. Through the night. Through the night. And though my ship, although my ship, though my ship. And though my ship may be rocky. Yeah. What shall we do, everybody? I shall rest in the eye of the Sing that last storm. verse one more time before you close off. Sing it one more time while somebody just makes that move. Sing that when last verse. The wind Fill in the card. And water rages and the billows begin Click on the link. Click on the link, YouTube. Click on the link, link Facebook. The blessed Click on that link and choose Jesus today. Come into the boat. Come into the boat. Speaks peace to Come into the boat. He holds me in his arms. So safe and so warm. And I find shelter. We see your response coming in, Sister A. You know yourself. Keep them coming. No matter what storm clouds Sister A from Bamboo, we see your response. Keep the chats active. If you don't know to fill in the link, type baptize in the chat and somebody will connect with you. If you are having a problem using the link to contact us, there's a telephone number you can reach out to us on that telephone number call it or send up a whatsapp or please call me or a text message it's there on the screen make a decision come into the boat
somebody God is waiting on you to come back to the boat you may not have, uh, have entered into it he said come out of the boats of sin and to enter into the boat of his grace he wants to take you to the other side hello from the other side won't you accept the invitation come into the boat come into the boat come into the boat my ship may be May be torn. May be torn. I shall rest. I shall rest. You shall rest. You shall rest. We shall rest. We shall rest. Where? In the the storm. Bless the name of Jesus. If by the grace of God, church of God, you will stay on the boat, stand where you are. Stand where you are. If by the grace of God, church of God, you will remain on the boat no matter what happens, stand where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. If you can't stand, raise your hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Bow your heads with me. Even as we get ready to transition in the next segment, bow your heads with me. Everlasting Father, O oh God, thank you, Lord, for inviting us to the other side. Amidst the storms, amidst the trials, amidst the tribulations, thank you, Lord, for inviting us to glory. We are happy to know that it's not a journey that we must go by ourselves, but that you've promised to be with us always, uh, even unto the end of the world. And we know that you are still the peace speaker, that when the storms are overbearing, uh, when the thunders are rolling, uh, when the lightning is striking, uh, you still have the capacity uh, and the sovereignty to command the winds uh, and the waves. Peace, uh, be still today uh, as we sail to glory some are going through sickness peace uh, be still some are going through depression uh, be still some are going through temptations uh, be still my soul oh god i pray that you may help us not to be fearful help us lord not to be of little faith uh, but to trust in you but to believe in you but to hold on to jesus and to ride out uh, our storms uh, help us not to try to stabilize the ship before we call upon you but to wake you up from the beginning or better yet go to sleep with you knowing that once you are in the midst of the storm we shall enter the midst of the calm there are some oh god who used to be on the ship but they jump ship literally but today god i pray that you may lose them seven demons may be holding them captive but in the name of jesus lord i decree and I declare victory over the demons that hold them shackled. I pray that you may loose them and bring them back to the boat. Some have never come on the boat before. Some are smart mouths. Some are difficult. Some are fearful. I pray, Lord, that you may set them free. We thank you, Lord, for those today in Brownstown Church Temple physically who have decided to come on the boat today we thank you for those in the alexandria district who decided to come on the boat today we thank you for those in the saint Deca district uh, who decided to come on the boat today we thank you lord for those in the bamboo district uh, who decided to come on the boat today we thank you lord for those across jamaica at this moment uh, who decided to come on the boat today we thank you for those overseas who have decided to come on the boat today help us lord all to come on the boat and to stay on the boat and to hold fast to the end knowing that the boat may rock but with christ as the captain we will never perish so it will stay intact cleanse us oh god forgive us of our sins fill us with the holy spirit that the devil may have nothing in us 
And I pray, Lord, that as these dear children of yours right across the vicinity today may they surrender in baptism and receive the inoculation of the vaccination of salvation ah, that you may strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and that you may, Lord, help us to stand by them in fulsome support even as we rejoice with heaven. Thanks for the invitation, Lord. Today, by your grace, we enter the boat and we stay in the boat. In Jesus' name, let the people say, hey. Amen. 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 At uh, this time, as I indicated, there are several persons coming on the boat today, right across these districts. And we, after finishing the service, will be going to carry out the maternity ward duties. Amen, somebody? It's a delivery day. We have just a small representation of those who will be on the boat today with us. And they are going to be reflected on camera. But the others you will see as we showcase them perhaps in tomorrow night's sermon or some other night of the week when we show you a synopsis of the vaccination that will take place today in the vaccination blitz of salvation. Elder Duncan, I invite you at this time to come. And to assess these candidates for us, even as we get ready to prepare them for the vote. When you are finished, please pray, then we'll close. And when we go offline, we pray that you may continue to walk with the Lord. And if you have not yet decided for him, you, you, you may make preparations to do the same. Then remember that though we don't stream this afternoon, you can always join the NJC Church Online at 3 for Bible class and for AY afterwards. And then at 6 o'clock, join us in Zoom for our wrap session. And then tomorrow morning, 5.30, for our morning manner. And then in the evening at 6.15 for episode number 11. You can't afford to miss it all aboard. God bless you. Over to you, Elder Duncan.